welcome back to another episode of the Bulletproof Hygiene Podcast. I'm here with Sharissa this week, of course, my partner in crime, again, to talk about really little itty bitty nano micro things um, having to do with hydroxyapatite and how it can impact our patients in our dental hygiene practice. So as usual, I am a research junkie and I feel that sometimes things are best said by the actual research results and conclusions. So I'm gonna go ahead and open us up to this with um, a little excerpt from a study um, that was published in the Canadian Journal of Dental Hygiene in 2021. And it was called Biomimetic Hydroxyapatite and Caries Prevention, a Systematic Review and Meta-Analysis. So hydroxyapatite is the primary calcium phosphate mineral in the human mineralized tissues, meaning teeth and bones. Calcium phosphate crystallites, including hydroxyapatite, have been extensively studied and determined to be biocompatible in humans. They're non-toxic when swallowed, at least in doses that are normally applied during toothbrushing. Hydroxyapatite has been successfully used as a biocompatible or biomimetic active mineral to encourage better bone healing and implant placement. Biomimetic means that the, synth the synthesized material exhibits chemical physical features close to those found in a human body. Hydroxyapatite crystals can be synthesized to the same formulation as found in the mineral tissues of dentin and enamel and can be made to resemble the same crystal structure. However, not all hydroxyapatite based materials are biomimetic. Since hydroxyapatite generally is biocompatible with with and beneficial to mineralized tissues, it would seem logical to add it to toothpaste to benefit tooth enamel and dentin. After thorough testing, hydroxyapatite containing toothpaste were first approved for sale in Japan in the 1980s to treat dentin, hypersensitivity, and for caries prevention. So Japan is, is way ahead of the curve, and I think that it's been legalized there for many, many years and promoted in, in place of fluoride. Um, is what I was reading while researching for this. Um, and it, on a different website, you know, what it, a different website actually said NASA created the first hydroxyapatite toothpaste in 1970. Um, and in 1978, Sang Deco Limited acquired the patent and began manufacturing it. And, at, and over the next 30 years or so, Sangi, Sangai, I hope that I'm saying that right. <laughs> toothpaste was studied extensively and beat cavities over and over again. So Japan's toothpaste market is dominated by hydroxyapatite and has been for decades. Um, one of the roles of dental hygienists is to provide evidence-based recommendations in their practice to improve overall health. And the, pur the purpose of this systematic review is to highlight the extent of the literature and in particular, the state of the evidence from clinical trials and the oral health benefits of biomimetic hydroxyapatite. In addition, this review is the first meta-analysis of clinical caries trials on hydroxyapatite toothpaste. As fluoride has been determined to be suitable anti-caries agent for all ages, this study sought to examine the literature on hydroxyapatite's anti-caries effects in clients of any age to determine its universal application. So in 2018, uh, in a 2018 review by Apple et al., the safety of calcium phosphates, including biomimetic hydroxyapatite was reviewed and it was concluded that hydroxyapatite can be safely swallowed when used in oral care products. Hydroxyapatite is an active biomimetic crystallite that has been shown to prevent caries in the primary dentition with similar results to fluoridated toothpaste. Hydroxyapatite containing toothpaste specifically formulated for babies, toddlers, and young children have been available in Europe and in the US by online order. None have been approved in the US for quote unquote anti-caries claim that is afforded the fluoride toothpaste sold in this country. However, in Canada, X Pure Remin toothpaste by Oral Science has a Health Canada approved anti-caries claim. Although this toothpaste is approved for use in children over two years of age, it's not specifically formulated for toddlers ages six to two years, six months to two years. And this study actually concluded that there is good evidence that hydroxyapatite in oral care products in the absence of fluoride effectively reduces caries for all ages. Another excerpt that I wanted to kind of read from before really talking about and diving into how this applies to us in a clinical day-to-day -day setting and how it may affect our patients and our practice in the future is called um, the effects of dentifrice com containing hydroxyapatite on dentinal tubule occlusion, a preliminary study. And it is from PLOS1, P-L-O-S-1 journal in 2012. 
Um, ordinary dentifrice with added hydroxyapatite showed a significantly increased effect of dental tubule occlusion after only seven days of brushing. The effect is similar to commercially available anti-dentin sensitive dentifrices and, their, and that reported by the commercial researches of such products. The measured rates of dental tubule occlusion by the hydroxyapatite dentifrice were all above 90%, which were confirmed by dentin discs of the premolars and molars. Further studies focusing on the levels of surface mineralization of dentin discs demonstrated that calcium percentages on the surface of dentin discs treated with hydroxyapatite increased significantly, suggesting that hydroxyapatite deposition and remineralization occurred on the surface of the dentin discs. An outstanding antisensitivity dentifrice should exert continuous good occlusion effects of the dentinal tubules against all adverse external environments, thus achieving durable antisensitivity effects. Our study thus designed a procedure of brushing with distilled water alone for seven days after treated with dentifrice for seven days. The results showed that although there was a slight loss of occluding materials after brushing with distilled water, the plugging rates of, of hydroxyapatite toothpaste for the dentinal tubules of premolars and molars were above 85%, confirming that the occlusion of the dentinal tubules by the uh, hydroxyapatite appetite toothpaste is persistent. So we're going to talk about five benefits of hydroxyapatite for teeth. And obviously the first is going to be it can prevent and heal, actually heal cavities. So every time hydroxyapatite has been pitted against fluoride toothpaste, it either performs equally well or better as a remineralizing agent. It increases the micro hardness of human enamel and prevents and reverses enamel erosion more effectively than over-the-counter fluoridated toothpaste. A concentration of 10% hydroxyapatite was just as effective as an amine fluoride toothpaste in a December 2019 study per, for preventing and reversing tooth decay in children. Hydroxyapatite was successfully able to shrink lesions of decay um, on teeth and improve enamel remineralization in a study conducted in Japan. According to the authors, the more hydroxyapatite in the toothpaste, the better it restored the enamel surface. In 2019, a study found that the use of hydroxyapatite toothpaste actually created a coating on the teeth more sturdy than that formed by fluoride toothpaste. This helped to strengthen enamel for future resistance to breakdown. And unlike fluoride toothpaste, hydroxyapatite toothpaste won't ever cause fluorosis. And this makes a whole lot of sense to me because going to our next point, it's non-toxic toxic and it's biocompatible, but because it is the same mineral structure that the enamel is made of, it makes a whole lot of sense that obviously it's going to uh, remineralize better and be more effective. Mm -hmm. But being non-toxic and biocompatible, thinking about that, it's one of the biggest drawbacks of fluoride toothpaste is that fluoride at high doses is a neurotoxicant. Um, a toxin that impacts the brain. However, hydroxyapatite toothpaste is a biocompatible substance that your body recognizes as something that belongs there. The CDC found that most kids use far more toothpaste than they should. And this is a big problem when you're talking about toothpaste with hundreds of times of the amount of fluoride than is found in water, but it's not a problem with hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite particles, like Brittany said earlier, are biomimetic, meaning they mimic the body's own familiar materials. They're widely unlikely to cause any sort of negative reaction. Some kinds of hydroxyapatite toothpaste are made with nanohydroxyapatite. And Brittany's going to get into that a little bit later, kind of the differences, but this is the tiny kind of particle that not naturally occurring has to be created synthetically. However, there are, is no evidence that these synthetic particles are less biomimetic or toxic in any way. They've also seen that it can help teeth appear whiter. Without any whitening ingredients, hydroxyapatite toothpaste may help to brighten and whiten your teeth. Toothpaste is, as we've said before, a polishing dental product. This means that it isn't necessary for the disorganization of the bacteria or on your teeth, which is the point of brushing teeth, but it actually is meant to polish teeth. It can also be used for additional benefits, such as aiding remineralization in a way similar, but not the same to fluoride action. One of these benefits is an increased whitening effect. While hydroxyapatite 
hydroxyapatite doesn't change the polishing activity of toothpaste. It adds a whitening element not otherwise seen by standard fluoride toothpaste. Hydroxyapatite literally fills in the enamel of your teeth with healthy tooth structure, altering the appearance of the teeth to be whiter. And this is also a really good point and super important right now as we're understanding more and more about um, microbiome is hydroxyapatite is actually good for the oral microbiome. Using hydroxyapatite toothpaste will help protect your teeth from acid attacks by bacteria, but without wrecking your oral microbiome. Fluoride, on the other hand, is bactericidal and tends to kill off bacteria in the mouth. Many oral care products think that by eliminating bacteria, they're improving the health of the mouth. And they may not be. The oral microbiome needs a good balance of bacteria to function properly and keep your mouth healthy. Agents like chlorhexidine, alcohol, triclosan may temporarily alleviate bacterial overgrowth problems, but they cause far more, far more issues over time than they help. And that's because they're also killing the good bacteria. Hydroxyapatite particles in toothpaste prevent bacteria from attaching to the enamel of teeth just as effectively as antibacterial agents, but without killing the actual good, healthy bacteria. This is a huge benefit as bacteria congregating on your teeth in one area is what leads to acid attacks. And we know it's basically when bacteria poop on the out the high carbohydrate food particles in your mouth. And those attacks are what cause tooth decay. It's all about the acidity. Not only does it help prevent acid attacks, but it won't destroy your precious oral microbiome. Hydroxyapatite is also resistant to acidic pH. So the pH of your mouth should remain slightly alkaline to avoid inflammation and oral disease. And hydroxyapatite toothpaste helps teeth become more resistant to acidic pH within the mouth, which would otherwise dissolve and break down enamel more quickly. And then lastly, it may improve gum health. Preliminary results have found that the use of hydroxyapatite toothpaste may help improve gum health in patients with gum disease. Improvements seem, seen included plaque control, bleeding gums, and pocket depth. So in some products containing hydroxyapatite, we may start to see things labeled as either micro or nano hydroxyapatite. So let's talk a little bit about the differences between those two things. Um, so hydroxyapatite toothpaste was originally developed synthetically using nano hydroxyapatite particles. And because nano hydroxyapatite has been around longer, there's more research to support its effectiveness. But micro hydroxyapatite is also available in some of the, the newer toothpaste brands. So first things first, both nano and micro hydroxyapatite powerfully remineralize teeth. So nano hydroxyapatite toothpaste, um, the particle size is between 20 and 80 nanometers. These are significantly smaller than the dentinal tubules that make up the dentin of your teeth. And fun fact, the astronauts who first benefited from hydroxyapatite used nano hydroxyapatite toothpaste. While there's some concern because the nano hydroxyapatite is synthetic and nano sized, these concerns are based on a false premise. So first of all, the synthetic nanoparticles are not uh, used, are not known to be dangerous according to multiple studies conducted on their safety. And the second thing is high quality nano hydroxyapatite should be rod shaped, not needle shaped. Most concerns around nano ingredients and cosmetics have to do with the way that these particles can penetrate parts of the body where they don't belong causing damage. Plus, as an added benefit, nanohydroxyapatite particles dissolve as soon as they hit the stomach. That means if you swallow some of your toothpaste, there won't be any tiny particles going anywhere that you don't want them to. The main benefit of nanohydroxyapatite is that it's likely more able to prevent sensitive teeth than microhydroxyapatite. The size of the particles allows it into spaces that otherwise may experience sensitivity to hot, cold, or touch. One September 2014 study found that Brushing with nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste improved tooth sensitivity equal to a fluoride toothpaste after as little as two weeks. The major drawback to nanohydroxyapatite is that regulations don't allow for very high concentrations of it in toothpaste. Therefore, a nanohydroxyapatite toothpaste is unlikely to contain as much of the active ingredient as a microhydroxyapatite toothpaste. Now let's look at microhydroxyapatite conversely. So micron-sized hydroxyapatite particles are five to 10 microns long, which is larger than most dentinal tubules. So we're not talking about 
nanometers anymore. We're talking about microns. Um, for those who want the most natural toothpaste option possible, microhydroxyapatite may be the way to go. It's available in higher concentrations of hydroxyapatite and can be derived from all natural materials, meaning no synthetics. Even at the smaller size, it seems that microhydroxyapatite successfully remineralizes teeth equally to fluoride. There's even evidence that it can help with sensitive teeth. Interesting. I would, I want to dig in a little more into that in, in some of my downtime about the difference between those. Yeah, um, to me, to me, it seems like, so it seems like when I was looking at the research and looking at the actual, like microscopy, like the nanoparticles fit into the tubules, like physically fill them. Whereas the micro don't, I think they're too big to fill them. So I'm not sure how that works, like for desensitizing or if it clings to the tooth a different way or builds a different sort of layer. But I know that the nano physically fits inside those little tubules. So yeah. I'm not sure how the micro works. Hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Interesting. So let's talk a little bit about how hydroxyapatite um, competes against fluoride. So when we compare the two, it um, and whether we're talking nano or micro, it consistently performs equally well or better than fluoride. It has been the go-to, like Brittany said earlier, um, the go-to option in Japan over fluoride toothpaste for over 40 years um, over the sodium fluoride. These particles work differently than fluoride. So fluoride doesn't actually replace minerals in your teeth. It basically creates a new structure called fluoroapatite. Fluoride also signals to your enamel through your saliva to efficiently uptake more calcium and phosphate, strengthening tooth structure. It forms its own unique material called fluoridated apatite or fluoroapatite above the surface of the tooth, which protects from dental plaque acids. Both fluoride and hydroxyapatite seem to slow or limit the production of pathogenic bacteria in the mouth. And I just want to think about that for just a second. The line about um, fluoride signals your enamel through the saliva to efficiently uptake more calcium and phosphate. So that's interesting that fluoride kind of works with your salivary flow to say, hey, pull some of that in. We need more minerals. Whereas the hydroxyapatite is actually directly depositing those minerals within. Mm -hmm. So that's interesting. It seems to me that hydroxyapatite would be a really good solution for your patients that have xerostomia, because if they're not able, you know, if the fluoride's not signaling the, the, the import from the saliva, because their salivary flow is low, that that hydroxy appetite might be a better solution there. Yeah. And in some of the studies that I was reading, like in one study, it actually, so like salivary flow actually impeded the significance and the success of nano hydroxy appetite binding where it should. So it's interesting. It seems like saliva works with fluoride to do its job and saliva maybe works against hydroxy appetite when it's trying to do its job. Got it. So Got it's it. interesting. So we'll go on to say that hydroxy appetite can directly replace the structure lost by your teeth during demineralization, which we know is happening constantly. Um, especially if our patients are eating a lot of sugary or acidic or carb heavy foods. It basically fills up the microscopic fissures on your enamel created by brushing and other normal wear and tear. When you brush, hydroxyapatite can bind with pieces of plaque or bacteria so that you end up spitting them out rather than letting them remain on the teeth. Instead of forming an external layer like fluoride, hydroxyapatite reaches down through your entire tooth to build it from the inside out. That's one reason it's so great for cavities. It can reach the bottom of carious lesions where fluoride can't touch. And finally, hydroxy applicate, hydroxy appetite results in smoother, whiter teeth when compared to fluoride because of how it fills the fissures and rebuilds the actual internal structure. In fact, it distinctly increases the micro hardness of previously demineralized lesions. Even if you're still using fluoride toothpaste, it's a good idea to switch to hydroxy appetite toothpaste if you're someone who may be at a higher risk for fluoride toxicity. This generally includes pregnant moms, children, people who are commercially exposed to fluoride. And I'm going to add in, cause I feel like I've had so many patients lately that, um, have, there's so many patients really honestly, that have a lot of thyroid issues these days. And I've had several patients share with me that their physicians have warned them away from fluoride because some of the effects that they found for the thyroid. So these are patients that would be a really good recommendation to do the hydroxy appetite. Yeah. 
this article I know recommended a couple of specific brands. I'm not familiar with a lot of the brands. I know that Teresa, I think you use carry free. Yes. That, and that yes. includes hydroxy appetite. Is that how Yeah. So carry free is such a great product. If you've never looked into it, just do a little research. They've got a lot of different options, but, um, they have both a, um, 5,000 parts per million fluoridated toothpaste that also has xylitol and hydroxy appetite, mm -hmm. as well as they have a carry three, it's their CTX3 gel, which has, is fluoride free and has the hydrox, the nano hydroxy appetite and the xylitol in it together. So they've got a couple of different options depending on what your patient's needs are. All right. So then I know that um, a couple of the other brands that are starting to use hydroxy appetite are Boca Ella and Risewell. I think that those are probably pretty widely available. I'm not sure. I haven't searched like on Amazon or, or um, a toothpaste aisle in a grocery store to see like really how available these things are um, to our patients. But to me, this has been like a really insightful overview, to be honest with you, about hydroxyapatite and how it's starting to be used topically and how patients can, you know, how it can benefit our patients, how it can benefit us and what it really does scientifically. So in in just researching for this article, I feel like there's so much more to learn and so much more to know about this topic, but I think this is a good inflection point and a good starting point to say, huh, how can we make either a transition or implement this in addition to fluoride or consider this, you know, adjunctively to benefit our patients? Because I think this is definitely the way that our industry is going. Yeah. And, and on that note, and I didn't realize this, that um, a lot of companies now are starting to coat their dental implants or even their um, like uh, shoulder, knees, that sort of things, <laughs> implants mm -hmm. with hydroxyapatite so yeah. that when they put it in, it's actually binding better with the bone that's there and stimulating the growth. And so I, I do, I agree with you. I think this is the way we're headed. And you know, this is the beauty to me of science and technology is we are constantly learning and growing and what we thought was the end all be all before may not be so much. We may have something that's, you know, better and um, more biocompatible. And I think that is the most important thing. So um, I appreciate, you know, all the information that you've dug in and, and gathered today. And hopefully our um, listeners have appreciated it as well. And I have a feeling some of our listeners probably are more adept with using hydroxy appetite than we might be. So if that's you and you've got a brand that you love or an application that you love, um, please, please, please come chime in on our mighty network. So basically it's a free app that you just download called mighty network. When you get in there, search for bulletproof hygiene and come share with us what you're doing, what you've seen, the results, um, because I want to know more. And I obviously always want to provide the best care for my patients. So I'm curious help us figure this out. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us today. And as always, we look forward to hearing from you and, you know, hearing about your feedback and if there's anything that you want to hear from us, please let us know on our mighty network, um, uh, forum. And also just remember that our summit live in person is happening this coming June, 2022, June 3rd and 4th in Nashville, Tennessee. It's going to be an incredible time. Early bird tickets are already sold out. And I know that they're continuing to to sell. They'll definitely be sold out prior to the event. So if you're interested in going and you've missed prior years, we would love to see your face. We'd love to see you in person. Come give us a big hug and um, let us know what you want to hear from us. We're looking forward to connecting with you and we hope that you have a fantastic week. If you want to know more about the summit, you can go to bulletproofsummit.com and we will talk to you soon. Bye-bye everybody.